This tutorial is about using movement effects with Magic's Movie Edit Pro 2013. You might have some still photographs that you want to combine into a slideshow. You can use the camera zoom feature on the movement effects menu to make your slideshow more interesting. Or you may have some nature video in which you want to zoom in on the subject. This can also be done easily with Magic's. You might also want to use size and position to reduce the size of the video clip to reveal a video underneath. This is easy to do and we're going to show you how to do it now with Magic's Movie Edit Pro 2013. Okay, so to begin let's just bring a video clip onto the uh, timeline. And we'll set the marker right in front of it there. Now let's go to Effects, Movement Effects, and we're going to look at Camera Zoom first and do a simple zoom and talk about keyframes. Okay, to start the zoom, we need to select the movie clip right here, select the object. Then we're going to set a keyframe. This is the keyframe buttons right here. So we press this diamond shape one and that creates a keyframe right here. Now you notice there's a marker on this keyframe timeline and it corresponds to this marker down here on the video clip. If I move the marker on the keyframe timeline you'll also see the marker moving down there on the timeline for the video clip. So these two correspond. Alright, we've got our first keyframe and the one I set had the uh, zoom parameter fully zoomed out. You can tell from this marquee, the dotted line around the movie, that it's fully zoomed out. So now let's zoom in a little bit. We'll go forward in time to we see the plane, say, right there. And we know it's going to sort of stay in that position for a little bit. So let's uh, set a keyframe at this location. We'll zoom in like this and it's automatically set a keyframe right here Magix does that automatically but you can also hit the uh, set keyframe button again to make sure it's in place alright now we've got the plane zoomed in say we want to keep it zoomed in for a certain section we can use the copy keyframe button. So I make sure this last keyframe is highlighted. Hit the copy keyframe button. Move forward in time a little bit. Say right to there. And paste it in with the paste or insert button. And now we got another keyframe. And now let's say we want to zoom back out at that point. Well we can copy the first keyframe which is fully zoomed out and paste it right after the zoomed in keyframe. Now if we play the whole thing we'll see the plane zooms in and then zooms back out for the landing. So what exactly are keyframes? Let's talk about that a little bit. We talked about the buttons with set, delete, copy, and paste. But what do these keyframes actually do? Well, I'm going to bring in a little text, which is just an image from Adobe Photoshop. I'm going to put that on the timeline, bring it up in the monitor, and let's expand the monitor view with this little button in the corner. So a keyframe in an animation and filmmaking is a movie frame that defines the starting and ending points of any smooth transition. So obviously this will work for different kinds of transitions. Between those are the frames of the movie. The movie is just made up of a bunch of different frames all strung together. And there's in-betweens that make the transition smooth. In-betweens are the frames between the keyframes which help to create the illusion of motion. So that's your frames of the movie. Now a more magics oriented uh, definition is keyframes 
define the value of a parameter, for example, the section size, at a certain point in the timeline. Magic's Movie Edit Pro interpolates between keyframes during playback, so the section changes automatically within the set time period. And I think we've seen that we've just placed four keyframes, but it didn't jerk between one and the other. It smoothly transitioned from one to the other. So that's basically how they work. And they can be used for other effects besides movement effects. Uh, you can use them, for example, for video effects such as color. Like if I was to change the U, you'll see the keyframe menu expands to show color correction level and angle. And you can make a keyframe for that. So there's a couple of them keyframes for color. And then I could go forward in time in the movie and, and change the color. Now if any time you don't like what you've done with the keyframes you can always hit reset. So I just reset the color. Keyframes can also be applied to the audio. Uh, audio menu, general. Like if I was to change the volume you see the keyframes menu here light up again. And I can put volume in there. So there's, there's various things you can do with the keyframes to control the parameters in the movie. They're just bits of information about the parameters. So just for the fun of it, let's make a title fly in. Alright, we'll place a title right here. It's just a general title. And we'll call it Fly In. and we'll place it right about there. Let's change the color to yellow and I think the size is just fine here we got 38. Alright now let's go into effects size and position and we're going to set some keyframes. So let's start with it Let's start with it uh, down here in the corner and we'll make it kind of small. We'll set a keyframe there. Now we'll move forward a little bit and we'll bring it up here, make it a little bigger. Then we'll move forward again, bring it up to here, a little bigger still, move it forward, and we'll just keep doing that. Let's go around in a circle here. Then we can end with it right here. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Put it right here. Okay. Now let's play back and see what it looks like. And it flies right in. Let's try it one more time. And there it is. Flies right in. Okay, we got the title to fly in, but now let's add some rotation to it. Uh, that would be under effects, movement effects, rotation and mirror. That's right here. So the first keyframe we'll leave alone. Just leave it flat and we'll beginning rotating each keyframe about a sixth of the way around on all three axes. So I'll start with the first one. Put that on that. Go about a sixth around. I don't know. We're just guesstimating here. Okay now don't forget to set the keyframe after doing each one. So we'll set the keyframe. Go to the next keyframe. Rotate a little more. Doesn't matter what order. Just Get them in there. Not cooperating. There we go. And set the keyframe again. Each time. Set the keyframe. Just moving a little bit each time. Set the keyframe after each one. Set the keyframe. I'm just emphasizing that because it's easy to forget. Now we only got two more to do, so we'll do one here. Actually, right about there. One about here. I think if you double click, it just goes back to the top. So I'm trying to avoid doing that. 
Um, there we go. Set the keyframe. Last one. We'll put that right about here. You can see this is a little tedious, but there we go. Set that last keyframe. Now for the final one, we want it to be normal. If I just double click, it sets it to the top, which is what we want, and it looks normal. All right, now I'll set the keyframe there, but let's see what it looks like. And there it is, flying around and flipping into place. Play it one more time. Flies around and flips into place, so it looks good. Okay, let's just uh, briefly cover the still picture slideshow movement effects, pan and zoom. I'm going to bring in some pictures here. I'll just do three. There we go. Now this is for us if you wanted to make a slideshow. There's the first slide, just a little picture of the box of Magic's Movie Edit Pro. And what I'm going to do is start with a keyframe at the beginning with camera zoom. So we're under effects, movement effects, camera zoom. And we're going to start panning across the box. So let's zoom in and then we're going to pan to the top. There's our first keyframe. And let's go ahead and move forward in time a little bit. And you can see the marker down here moving as well. Now we'll go up to the top of the box. Set another keyframe. Now let's move forward in time again. And we'll start zooming out. Set another keyframe. And then we might go full screen on the whole picture at the end, but for now let's just zoom this way and show the CD. Maybe a little bigger on the zoom so we can still see the box title. And finally, we'll zoom all the way out. Now there's a little trick for that. You can go to size and position and just hit maximize and then go back to camera zoom and set your keyframe. Make sure it's set. And you've got it zoomed all the way out. Alright, now let's just see what that looks like. We'll play the movie. There we are zoomed in, going to the top, zoom out, full screen. And you saw right about uh, Right about in the middle, we were all the way out, so let's just uh, chop off the rest of that. Little clip using the razor blade. I've now chopped off the part I didn't want anymore. And then I'll just delete it using the delete key on the keyboard. Okay, so now we just got our little clip there. Now let's move the next clip in. The next clip. is a little picture on the wall. Okay, so let's start out with a little zoom right here. We'll slowly reveal it. There's our first keyframe right here. Now let's move down here. Oh wait a minute, pardon me. We want to go forward a little bit in time first. Then move down here. Set a keyframe. Move across. And then maybe start the zoom out. So move forward in time again. And you can also move forward in time with this marker down here. If you don't want to keep going way back up to the keyframe timeline. Now if that happens where it's squished down and you can't get a hold of the handles anymore, um, grab it anywhere and drag it. 
we want to zoom this out pretty far, maybe up to the frame level. And let's put that keyframe about here. I got an extra keyframe here. I don't know what that's about. Oh, that's the one I wanted. Okay, let's just delete this one in here with the X. Move that one back a little. And we'll end it out here with a full frame. I'll just go back to... Now I'll show you how we can make full frame without using size and position. Just drag it. Put it up in the corner. And there you go. You can do it that way. But see, it's easy just to go to size and position and hit maximize. Do that. Sets it in there nice. Go back to camera zoom. There you go. I'll set that last keyframe. And let's just stop the film off right here because we're all the way out now anyway. So I'll use a razor blade. Remove that little section with the delete key. Now we can put it up against the other one. And here's what we have. So just like that. And we can even do a little fade by overlapping the two. So then we'd have something like this. It fades into the other picture. So that's basically how you do the slides. And uh, we can put one last one in here. On this one, what do you say we just go ahead and we'll do a zoom out. Bring this out to full size, maximize. Set the keyframe. And then we'll, we'll probably want to uh, go back to camera zoom. We'll just zoom into the squirrel like that. Make sure that keyframe is set. Move forward a little bit in time. Cut it off. So we get just what we want. Overlap it. And there's the whole sequence. So we're panning and zooming around magics, then looking at the cars, then fading and going to the squirrel. And that's all there is to it. You can do that for your whole slideshow. Okay, let's show how we can use size and position to shrink a movie and reveal a movie underneath. So I'm going to bring in a movie here of a bird. There's the bird. So let's go up to, well we'll start right here on camera zoom because first we're going to have to zoom in on it to make a little special effect. So we'll set a keyframe in the front for full screen. Then we'll start to zoom in on the bird, like this. Set the keyframe there, move ahead in time a little. Zoom a little more. Set that keyframe. And then we want to go ahead and copy that keyframe. We'll copy it right here. This is the copy button. Go forward in time a little more. Paste it in so it stays zoomed the whole way. Now the next thing we're going to do is put a keyframe for size and position near the end. Let's say right about here. Go to size and position. And let's go ahead and we need to see the marquee for size and position, which we're not seeing right now. So what I'll do is just go ahead and type a size in, say 2000, just so we can get things going here. Now when I change that, now we can see the marquee. And what we're going to do is shrink it down. This is shrinking the whole movie frame. It's not zooming in. It's keeping the same zoom. It's just making the movie smaller. Okay, let's shrink it down to where it's almost invisible. And then we'll make sure we set the keyframe. And then let's move forward a little bit. 
very little bit. This is just a little trick. I'm just going to move it off the screen down here. Set another keyframe. Okay, so what we have is this. We gradually zoom in on the bird, and then we stay zoomed in till we get down near the end. Now, once it reaches the end keyframe, it goes to size and position, shrinks it, and moves it off the screen. Now, what we want to do is when it starts to shrink, say right in this area, we want to have this other movie uh, right here be revealed. And the way it's revealed is you place it above the other movie. Whichever movie is on the bottom, that's the one that's going to be seen. And the other one will be covered up. But as we shrink this bird movie, the one at the top will be revealed. And here's what the effect will look like. And now we get the shrink and the plane is revealed underneath. It'll be much smoother when the uh, movie is exported. But that's the whole trick to it. You can see the keyframe here. That was the end keyframe for the zoom and then it began to transition for size and position over to these other two keyframes. So if you watch this marker and watch the video monitor, you can see it starts to shrink right in here and then is taken off the screen to reveal the one underneath. So that's it for that trick. Well, I don't want to make this movie too long, and I think that's enough information for the beginner to take in at one time. It'll take a little practice, and getting used to the features is just one of those things that has a learning curve. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you can leave any comments you want to in the comments section. And please don't forget to like it and subscribe. Thanks for watching.